What's going on all my YouTube buddies? It's me Jacob with another video. I'm going back into TV land in this video and I'll be reviewing the fifth season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So let's talk about it. So if you're new to my channel, I do TV reviews, movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other fun stuff along the way. I did a previous video a while back where I covered the first four seasons of Buffy. It's over an hour long, but I talk a lot about it, and I had a lot of fun making that video. So if you're curious about where I stand on the previous four seasons, definitely give that video a shot and I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Little warning though, my review of season five will include some mild spoilers. Not intense spoilers where I like spoil like every single thing within the season. I might give away certain things that happened throughout the course of the season, but I'm not going to spoil how the season ends or some of the bombshells or shocks that happen throughout the season because I, in case in case you still watch the video and don't care about mild spoilers, I don't want to ruin it for newcomers either. I think Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a show definitely worth checking out if you're new and I don't want to ruin that because this show is so, so good. So, season five of Buffy aired on the WB Network, which is now the CW, by the way, uh, from 2000 to 2001. Uh, the show uh, it was created by Joss Whedon, who's still a writer, director, and executive producer. So, in season five, after an unsettling encounter with Dracula, Buffy asks Giles to once again be her watcher. Luckily, he agrees, for Buffy is about to face problems far more threatening than the undead. The sudden arrival of a sister named Dawn, her mother's mysterious illness, and Spike's undying devotion. Then an undefeatable demon appears, forcing Buffy to turn to an ancient spirit guide who tells her that love is her greatest gift and power. So if you saw my previous video re reviewing the first four seasons, you know that I loved the finale of season four. This very experimental episode that focused on characters' dreams and their fears and it hinted at a more bolder, darker direction. Season five definitely goes in a more mature direction because the previous seasons were fun and you can get into these characters, but it was still a little campy at times, especially the early seasons. It, it was nice to see season five uh, play a little more serious than previous routes. There's still some comedy in there and some camp to bring some levity with some of the more intense moments. I mean, one of my favorite comical episodes of the season is where uh, an unfortunate incident there causes Xander to have a clone version of himself and it's played by the actor's twin brother so that was really great seeing the two in, uh, share the same scene without having to use like a body double or, or anything like that so it was nice to, they played around with the fact that he did have a twin brother, and it was just really hilarious to watch. Even like, even something like the episode with Dracula early on, you think that wouldn't work? You're like, really? A fictional series with vampires? I have to do a pop culture figure in there, but they do a unique version of Dracula, and I really dug it, especially considering the connection, you know, Dracula's presence has against Buffy's encounter. At, with previous vampires so i really dug that episode and the show just got better and better as the season went on uh, there's a lot of bold directions uh, throughout this season where you're not really sure where it's gonna go when they first introduce some of these new characters like i, I like in the synopsis i talked about Buffy's sister named Dawn, and you're, you you hear that that going in, you're like Buffy has a sister, and they they don't mention her in previous seasons. I mean, I remember in the first episode they specifically state Buffy's an only child, and so you're like, how are they gonna explain this when it's finally revealed, like what actually happens, and you're like, okay, I can actually buy this because you know she shows up 
and everyone just okay with this. Like it, it's normal that this random kid just comes out of nowhere saying she's Buffy's sister. And like I said, one, once they explain where she actually came from, you're like, oh, okay, there's a lot of neat potential here. And I really like the character. I think th her acting is a little stilted at times, but considering some of the weight that character had to go through, especially when she learns more about her past, I thought she did a good job overall. And especially having to work with uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, because... She really did a great job of making her feel at home with the rest of the cast. And the other new character I have to bring up is the main villain of Season 5, this demon named Glory. And when you see her, she acts like a valley girl. <laughs> and she always wears these fancy dresses and you're like, she's the evil demon we're supposed to be scared about? You gotta be kidding me, right? Well, as the season progresses, you start to learn more about the character, and some dark secrets within her personality. And where that goes, uh, the character is really interesting, and she does have a really demented bad side when you cross her line. And when you get to that bad side, she is really creepy. I'm really shocked to say that. It's definitely better than... that joke villain we had in the first season was like, I must defeat the staff. That's a, don't get his weird Sean Connery impression. <laughs> but yeah, Glory, I think she's one of the better villains overall in Buffy. Uh, definitely up there with that creepy mayor from season three. All of the characters in this season are excellent. And like what Joss Whedon does best with an ensemble cast, they all have their moments of shine. Obviously, the star is still Buffy. She has a lot to go through in this season, and Sarah Michelle Gellar pays every little aspect of that character off. A to Z. Whether it's the fight choreography, some of the more serious stuff, the personal stuff her character has to go with, with some of these new arrivals and problems going on within the family. She pulls off every little thing, and it works. And yeah, th there's a lot more development to the character than we first met her in Season 1. So it's great to see uh, continued growth in that character. In fact, I think all the characters have really matured since we first met them. I think the biggest matured progression in a character from the series is Xander. I mean, when you first met Xander in season one, he's like the jokey loser type guy. But by season five, he's still jokey and he still quips, but he has a steady job and a loving girlfriend. And so you, you find that he actually has more, you have more empathy for the character because the show establishes that, you know, he can actually succeed in the world and instead of just being, you know, just a stand in. Zeppo guy that just helps everybody out and just there for comic relief. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I even like the Anya in there too. There's a little bit more humanity to that character since she was a she's a demon trapped in a girl's body. So you, you get to see more humanity in that character the more that she finds herself falling for Xander. You have more of the relationship between the two witches, uh, Willow and Tara. And they do a really good job with that relationship. Uh, starting out, you think, ah, it's, it's a little sidelined early on. And you feel like, oh, they're not getting their fair due. But then an early episode early on uh, shows that you know, the, the Scooby gang is what they're called. Really uh, show that, you know, both of the witches, not just Willow, is an integral part of the group. And then once she becomes part uh, the relationship actually starts to deep off. I really liked Willow's progression, especially in season five. The more she develops as a witch, the stronger she gets, and it starts to get a little dangerous for her to tap into these powers. And I think that'll be some interesting layers going in in the up upcoming seasons. Because I enjoyed seeing this darker side of Willow, especially considering earlier in the series she was like the like sweet nerdy girl 
who <laughs> didn't want to pick a fight with anybody. So the fact that she went from that to this really dark witch. Yeah, uh, I, I can't wait to see where she, that character goes. Uh, Spike is amazing in this season. He's still very comical. And it, it, obviously he's not evil anymore like he was in season two, but <laughs> he was still a scene stealer in almost every episode he was in. And I think it had to do with the fact that in this season it plays out that he has the hots for Buffy, like this really crazy obsession over Buffy. One of the things that cracked me up and throughout the season was that everyone else that reacted to his crush found it hilarious, but Buffy found it very creepy and disturbing. And I'm kind of in the middle on that. That plot thread I find very hilarious, but it is also kind of creepy at the same time. But then again, you had Buffy and Angel early on. But yeah, it's Buffy and Spike. I'm, I'm curious uh, where that's going to go. Uh, you still have Riley from season four and season five. And uh, he had an interesting arc. Let's just put it that way. Uh, where he stands in the middle of Buffy's personal drama. And there's some neat stuff in that relationship as well. Uh, and uh, Giles had some neat stuff as well. Uh, he's Buffy's watcher again. He was kind of sidelined in season four. But he has more to do in this season. He even runs a magic shop now. He, he, great mentor character for the series. Uh, Josh Whedon directed three episodes in season five, and they're some of the best in the season. Uh, he directed the one where they you really start to care about Tara, who was considered an extra in the previous season. And I like how Josh wants you to care about her character and where she is with Willow and the rest of the gang. That was a really sweet episode. Uh, he directed the season finale, which is a lot of fun. The episode I especially want to bring up is an episode called The Body. And it's really hard to talk about The Body without diving into major spoilers. So I'm going to try to make this episode as spoiler-free as possible. So in this episode, there's a major bombshell. A major character dies. I'm not going to reveal who. What makes this shocking is the fact that most of the deaths in the series is usually they get killed off. This character died of natural causes. And you think when you see the fact that, oh, this they're going to kill off this character. Oh, somebody's going to kill this character off. It's going to be... Not like, you know, a vampire is going to kill her off or demon is going to kill her off or whatever. But no, uh, natural causes, it was a normal death. It made the episode all the more depressing when it, that way and more surprising and unsettling than the fact that this character did not get killed off by a vampire or demon. It was through natural causes, a normal, average way to die. And it was just heartbreaking from start to finish. And... It, I love the fact that it was done, it seemed like it was done uh, mostly real time. There are some edits throughout the episode, but I love the fact that we have an episode that dealt with the fact that all these characters reacting to the loss of a loved one. And it was so believable. And then there's just the fact that you have, you know, the filmmaking in this episode is just phenomenal. It's probably one of the best directed TV episodes I've ever seen in my life. It's definitely up there with Hush from season four. But what makes uh, the body stand out is the fact that, one, there is no music score in this episode, with the exception of, you know, the theme song. The theme song is really awesome. But throughout the episode, there is no music at all. It's just the characters reacting uh, to this unexpected death. And just them trying to cope with the fact that, you know, this character died. And... It made the episode more unsettling with the fact that there was no music. There's no saccharine, sappy music to try to lighten the mood or try to force you to cry. It happened with no music. And it, it made the episode more heartfelt and believable. And then it made the atmosphere creepy too. Like one of the characters actually sneaks into the morgue at the end of the episode to see the body. The fact that there was new music in that scene alone just made the entire episode that much creepy. And then the other thing I have to bring up 
Oh, um, th there's this one shot I gotta bring up where Buffy reacts to this loss. And there's like this three to four minute tracking shot of her roaming around the house trying to you know, call the police and then she's walking around and she barfs and vomits. Very believable stuff. And Sarah Michelle Gellar, she's definitely had her A-game in this season. I definitely bravo. Definitely props to Sarah Michelle Gellar, the crew and the writers for putting Buffy at her most vulnerable. I really like, I, I really like that because, you know, I, I get annoyed when people complain about, you know, female characters, you know, being written uh, too perfect. Or they, or they dismiss the character in general and are skeptical of them because of the fact they're women. But I think season five of Buffy shows that, you know, you can have different ranges of emotions and still be a well-written character. And... I really love this season because of that. In fact, I think season five is my favorite season of Buffy so far. Uh, the other thing I gotta bring up, the finale is excellent. The urgency is uh, top notch. You know that something bad's gonna happen if they don't succeed. And that's what makes the climax very fun, exciting, and also really intense. I think some of the choreography, there's, there's this one building is kind of problematic the way it's shot. The editing's a little wonky, but I still got into the characters enough to where I could overlook some of the issues I had with the way some of the action was shot. But the way it ended, oh my gosh, the way it ended. I honestly have no idea where the series is going to go, because without going into heavy spoilers, yeah, this season actually foreshadowed Avengers Infinity War and how unexpected this season ended. Maybe not as crazy as Infinity War was, but just, man, the way that season ended, I was really shocked at what happened. And you're like, how are they going to finish this? How are they going to finish two more seasons with how season five ended? I mean, it was crazy. I have no idea what's going to happen next. And I think that's what makes the series exciting. They have some of these really neat cliffhangers to where, you know, your episode ends. It ends with this moment where you're really shocked at where it's going to go. And it leaves you intrigued at what they're going to do next. I think that's one of the unique things I've seen Buffy on DVD compared to when it originally aired. Because when it originally aired, the episode ends and you got to wait the next week to see what happens next. Of course, with DVD, you can watch it instantly. And so I think I have the advantage of that. I would probably be peeing in my pants having to wait a week for some of the plots to continue uh, if I had watched it when it originally aired. I do have some negatives in Season 5. I think they're kind of nitpicks. Some of the creature effects have not aged well at all. There are some neat practical effects on some of the creatures in this season. There's like this one demon that they come against, uh, I think in the later half of the season. Which I thought it was really cool how they did that. But some of the CG, yeah, the CG was not that good. I think you can kind of laugh at it now. But I, I, I don't know if it was cutting edge even when it first aired because obviously the TV shows didn't have as big a budget on doing creatures compared to the movies. So like there's a snake thing Buffy fights in one episode and it just looks so unbelievably cheesy and hilarious looking. I mean, uh, when the snake sits still, it's a practical effect, but when it moves around, you can tell it's CG. It does not look good at all now. And then I think my other issue, again, introducing the characters like Dawn and the villain Glory, it takes a while to get used to them, but once, once the season develops these characters and you kind of see what, where the characters are coming from and you learn more about them, that's when the characters become really excellent. I think one more thing I need to bring up, there's like two really good guest stars that show up uh, throughout season five, and I want to have a small shout out to both of these actors. One, Amy Adams had one of her first acting roles in an episode of Buffy, and it was the one, I think it's the episode Family, where they develop more of Tara as a character, and we get to see her family. And 
Amy Adams plays, I'd like to say Tara's sister. It's either her sister or cousin. The episode didn't really explain who she was. And yeah, her acting, you can tell she was a newbie. And it's definitely not a great performance like what you expect Amy Adams to be. It was definitely long before she became an Oscar-nominated actress. But it was neat to see where she got her start. And yeah, I really liked her in this episode. I thought she was appropriately creepy. I'll just put it that way. And then legendary actor Joe Gray plays a mysterious character who made a couple of appearances in the final episodes of the season as a character named Doc. I don't want to go into spoilers into that character, but that character is a good mix between, you know, a likable guy to somebody that you don't expect to have a dark edge to. And yeah, I really like that character. I don't know if we're going to see more of him, but I really like that character. Buffy season five is excellent. It's easily my favorite season so far. I like the mature direction it went, like the season four finale was promised. Uh, it has a better villain compared to the previous season. I don't think the narrative is as splotchy as season four was. I loved all the characters, even the new ones. Uh, you get to see Joss Whedon's commitment to the excellence and technical brilliance of this show from... You know, doing fun adventures of them of them slaying vampires and demons while also balancing that with some really good drama. Actually, some great drama here. Because I think I like that the season focuses more on Buffy's personal life compared to previous seasons. And I think that's what made this season, I think, more compelling than a lot of the other ones. Especially when we get to the body. That episode. That episode just shook me emotionally that episode wow uh you might want to bring some tissues on that one all right my i'm gonna give this average of season out to five out of five i really love this season and i have no idea where you know joss concludes this the series with because when you watch the end of season five while it's kind of a cliffhanger it could have been the series finale but they did two more seasons, so I'm really curious how it's going to end now. It's kind of like Infinity War in a way, like I said. On the 100-point scale, I'm going to give Season 5 a 95 out of 100. <laughs> yeah, definitely a great season worth checking out. Obviously, if you're new, if you want to get a full experience of these characters, start with the beginning in Season 1. Definitely campy and cheesy compared to where the series goes but j just wait it out if you don't like the early episodes i think they're so stupid give it some time give us a time because the series develops the better it gets and you definitely get to see joss whedon's best strengths as a writer and a director and you get to see the stepping stones of the man he is today with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that was my review of Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 5. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer up to this point. Or the entire series in general. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this season. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or were you in the middle? Uh, whatever your thoughts are. Please be respectful and considerate of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content of mine, and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I have some more videos coming for you soon. In the, the TV side, obviously I'll finish the last two seasons of Buffy, because I am really excited where the series goes from here. But I think for now, I think the next TV video I'll do, I'll finish the Netflix series of Unfortunate Events. I still have the last season to watch. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description below, like I said, for the other video where I reviewed the first four seasons of Buffy. It, it's a lengthy watch. It, like I said, it's over an hour. But if you're a fan of Buffy and are curious what I have to say about these four seasons, yeah, definitely check it out. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!